In this recording, we will introduce blood vessels and discuss blood vessel anatomy. Your blood vessels are responsible for transporting blood to your tissues, where gases, nutrients, and wastes can be exchanged before transporting the blood back to the heart in a cyclical fashion. Your vessels are also um, responsible for assisting in the regulation of blood flow to your tissues, assisting with controlling your blood pressure, as well as the secretion of a variety of chemicals. Your blood vessels are basically just long tubes. These tubes have a center space, we call this the lumen, and the lumen is surrounded by several tissue layers, we call these tunics. There are three tunics that we would like you to become familiar with, your intima, your media, and your externa. So your tunica intima, your innermost layer, the one that will be touching the blood itself. We have endothelial cells okay, um, that provide a smooth surface for the blood to flow th uh, across. The endothelium of your tunica intima is actually continuous with the endocardium of the heart. So think about the blood going from the left ventricle out through the aorta. And this is one nice continuous um, anatomical structure, really. In addition okay, to just being continuous, we are really trying to minimize friction and turbulence with those nice um, smooth cells of the endothelial layer. We mention friction a lot, and we always mention that it's a bad thing, and this is no difference. The more friction, the more turbulence that the blood experiences as it flows through the veins, the more it can negatively affect things like your blood pressure, and we know that that's bad. So again, we want this to be a nice smooth surface for the blood to flow against. In addition to the endothelial cells, we also find elastic fibers that provide distensibility and elasticity to the vessels themselves. Um, when our vessels experience increased pressure, okay, they can stretch a little bit, but once that pressure goes back down to normal, we would like the vessels to recool back to the original size. Um, so those elastic fibers allow us to both stretch and go back to the original size, and that's important. Now, our tunica intima, our middle layer, we technically have two parts, two layers to this um, tunic. We've got a layer of smooth muscle cells. These smooth muscle cells are arranged in a circular manner around the lumen. Um, and then we have an elastic fiber layer that has a fancy science name, external elastic lamina. The smooth muscle layer, um, the smooth muscle cells themselves are responsible for controlling the diameter of the blood vessel, which ultimately controls the amount of blood that flows to an organ. These smooth muscles are directly innervated by your good old sympathetic nervous system. We call these nerves your vasomotor nerves. So vaso is in vessel, motor is in movement. So we're gonna change or we're gonna move um, the diameter. We're gonna change the diameter of the vessels themselves. And we have two options. We can either decrease the diameter through vasoconstriction, or we can increase the diameter through vasodilation. For vasoconstriction to occur, we will use the sympathetic nervous system to stimulate those smooth muscle cells. They will contract. We will achieve vasoconstriction. We will have narrowed the diameter of the vessels. However, if we want to do vasodilation, okay, um, it's easy to get it in your head. Oh, the sympathetic nervous system, it does this. So if we want to undo that, we must need your parasympathetic system. Notice that nowhere in here have we mentioned the parasympathetic nervous system. If we want to vasodilate, the sympathetic stimulation to the smooth muscle cells decreases. Okay, That's how we get those smooth muscles to relax, and that's how we get vasodilation. Okay, so don't fall into the trap of, oh, sympathetic does vasoconstriction, oh, parasympathetic must do vasodilation. You would be incorrect and you would lose points. Don't do that. Okay, make yourself a note. All right, our last layer, our tunica externa. Sometimes this is referred to as your tunica adventitia. It is composed of dense, irregular, collagenous, connective tissue, which is hard to say. That is a mouthful, y'all. This layer supports your blood vessels and helps prevent them from overstretching. 
we have to feed this layer as well. We have special little tiny, tiny vessels. They are called vasovasora. Here they are, look at them, aren't they cute? Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. They are going to supply oxygen and nutrients to these two outer layers of the vessel, the externa and the media. These are gonna to be too far away from the blood itself in the lumen to do diffusion adequately. Um, so your intima, okay, we're probably just gonna do diffusion straight into these endothelial cells themselves. But there's really no way that we can take nutrients from the lumen and diffuse them all the way into this smooth muscle and this external layer. It's just not gonna happen. And so we've got these extra little vessels that are responsible for um, providing nutrients, um, oxygen, and all that good stuff to those two layers as well. Now, most of your arteries have much thicker tunica media compared to your veins. Okay. This is because your arteries um, are usually under much greater pressure compared to the veins themselves. Um, so remember that media layer is that um, middle, that smooth muscle layer, as well as we've got some more elastic fibers there. Also, um, you are going to have to pump. Remember, your arteries are kind of um, taking that blood. So think of your aorta specifically. We're taking that blood straight from the heart, um, and we are pumping it out to the body. The heart technically did the pump but your aorta has to then make sure that the high pressure that it is under, um, it doesn't overstretch your aorta, it doesn't rupture your aorta, and so we make these a little thicker to make sure that we can withstand that high pressure and that high blood volume that's going through there. Your external and internal elastic lamina are also much more extensive, so again, that much higher pressure um, for your arteries compared to your veins, we're making sure that we don't overstretch as well. And even though you can't really see it in, your, in our little cartoon picture here, if we look at our real picture, um, this black layer here and this black layer, this dark layer here, those squiggles, those are the elastic fibers that we have mentioned. Um, you can see that we don't really have that in the vein. Okay, we don't really have that in the vein. We've got just the itty bitty tiny bit that's very prominent in the artery. Again, we're under a much higher pressure here. We do need to stretch, but we don't want to overstretch. So those, um, those elastic fibers help with the, the extensibility as well. Okay. Now, one of the things that you will notice is that the vein, we do have a much larger lumen compared to the artery though. Now, both your pulmonary and your systemic circuits are composed of arteries, capillaries, and veins. Arteries are responsible for taking blood away from the heart. They will start to branch off. They will get progressively smaller in diameter as they supply most of the tissues and the organs within your body. Eventually, they will um, branch off into your capillaries. And your capillary beds are where gases, nutrients, and wastes are exchanged. Many of your capillary walls are only one cell thick, so these guys are really, really tiny. Once we do gas exchange, uh, we need to take up all the waste products and we need to send them back to your heart. So we use veins to do that. They will drain your capillary beds. We will return that blood to the heart. We will pick up new oxygen um, and things like that and we'll just do it all over again. Now, we do have a couple different types of arteries, and the classifications really depend on the size and the function. So we have elastic arteries, muscular arteries, and arterioles. So your elastic arteries, sometimes these are referred to as your conducting arteries. These are the large, uh, the largest diameter arteries that you have. This includes your aorta and the branches that immediately come right from the aorta. These are gonna be the ones nearest the heart. They are under the highest pressure of all of the rest of the vessels in your entire cardiovascular system. They are going to conduct the blood out to the various locations in your body, okay? Um, they do contain a lot of elastic fibers because of that really high pressure. Then we have muscular arteries. Sometimes these are called distributing arteries. These are a little bit um, smaller 
in diameter compared to elastic arteries. They have um, very thick tunica medias, lots of smooth muscles. Um, these are the ones that are going to supply most of your organs, okay, so your renal artery, okay, would be a muscular artery. Your distributing arteries, we're going to distribute the blood to the organs and the tissues. And then we have arterioles, okay, these are very small for an artery, okay. They do still contain all three tunics that we just mentioned. Okay, they're just very thin layers. In fact, the tunica media, the smooth muscle layer, um, we really only might get one, two, or three layers of smooth muscle, and that's it. And if we go back to our picture, where's our picture? Here's our picture. Um, it's a little hard to count, but we get quite a few more than just three layers in this big old artery compared to an arterial. Um, we can see our elastic artery, look at all these elastic fibers. Look at them, y'all. Look at all these little squiggles. This is a muscular artery. You can see we do still have elastic fibers, but we it's nothing compared to the amount of elastic fibers that you find in these elastic arteries, okay? And this is that, that empty space. This is that lumen up here. Look at that lumen up here. This is where the blood, all these little things in here. This is blood. These are little red blood cells, okay? All right. Um, your arteries. You have a couple of arteries in particular that help play a role in the monitoring of your blood pressure and the detection of concentrations of certain chemicals in your blood. We have both pressure and chemical receptors in some of your particular arteries. Your pressure receptors, we call these baroreceptors. Baro means pressure. Um, these are found in your aorta as well as your common carotid artery in your neck. These can detect when your blood pressure is too high or too low, and it can send signals to your brain, um, good old feedback loops. And then your carotid artery and your aorta also have chemo receptors, okay, chemical receptors. These detect the concentration of substances, for example, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen ions. And we can detect, oh, we don't have enough oxygen, oh, we've got too much carbon dioxide, things like that. And then again, we kick into specific feedback loops if we need adjusting.